So I was invited here today by AME to measure AMROC tombstones because AME cares about the science of vibration. Uh, hi, my name is Tony Schmitz. I'm a professor at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. I have a joint appointment at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, uh, the manufacturing demonstration facility, also in Knoxville. So in phase two, we had a couple of, of objectives. One of those was to machine in two different materials, aluminum and steel, because those are, those are common materials to AME customers that would be purchasing these tombstones. Um, and then the second was to compare that machining performance with the same exact cut geometry on all four tombstone materials. After establishing the vibration response of each one of the tombstone materials, we then moved to a machining platform. We mounted the tombstones on a machine tool and then performed machining trials in order to compare the vibration behavior between the four tombstones. So on each one of the tombstones, we made four independent cuts two cuts in steel and two in aluminum on whatever the tombstone material was. Those cuts were, were completed in two different directions. In one cut, we had the workpiece, whether it was aluminum or steel, mounted on the face of the tombstone. In the second cut, it was mounted on the side of the tombstone. And then we used two different cut directions in order to excite vibration in the flexible direction of the tombstones. So in the phase two testing, we actually had two separate tests that we completed for each tombstone. The second was to repeat the dynamic testing that we did on the soft foundation previously. But this time, the tombstone was mounted on the machine tool in question. So we were able to get the vibration characteristics of the tombstone as mounted in the machine, and then complete cutting tests in order to measure the vibration response of each of those tombstones while machining. So the comparison of the four materials for the tombstones yielded some, some surprising results. Um, what we saw was a tremendous difference in damping or energy dissipation um, in the epoxy tombstone relative to the other materials. The lowest ranking material in terms of the damping that it added was the aluminum tombstone um, and then epoxy was far and away the best. Uh, so there are, two, there are two conclusions that I want to draw from the phase two testing. The first is how important is the machine tool uh, dynamics on which you mount the tombstone? In other words, if I, if I put a very stiff tombstone on a not so stiff machine, maybe it doesn't matter so much that I have a very stiff tombstone. So I just wanted to see, um, get putting all four tombstones on the same machine tool, um, how different was the response. Second, during the machining trials, I placed an accelerometer, which is a vibration transducer on the tombstone to measure the motion while machining. In other words, as I'm putting the cutting force into the machine, into the tombstone, um, how did it respond while cutting? So the idea is, um, if the tombstone response is dictating the machining behavior, I would see a smaller vibration signature on a, say, a highly damp tombstone than I would on one that was lowly damped. In the second test, what we did was we wanted to do a, an apples to apples comparison. So we mounted exactly the same workpiece on all four tombstones and then we performed exactly the same machining pass on that workpiece on all four tombstones. And so this was as close to identical condition um, as we could demonstrate, you know, in a machining scenario. And then the metric in this case um, was the amplitude of vibration that we got as measured on the tombstone. So cast iron, steel, and epoxy all behaved um, you know, within a few percent of one another. And then the, the aluminum tombstone was, was much larger vibration amplitudes in each case. So if I owned a shop and, and I were gonna make this decision, here would be the decision matrix that I would use. First of all, I would rule out the aluminum tombstone. Um, second, um, to justify the cost of the epoxy tombstone, 
Um, I would be convinced that I, I could have um, acceptable machining performance relative to steel or cast iron. So I wouldn't have to worry about that. Um, the trade-off that I would measure would be um, the reduced mass of the epoxy relative to the cost. So let's say I could reduce the mass by 50% by going to the epoxy, then I would feel justified, um, I don't know, in, in, a, in a simple calculation by saying I could justify maybe 50% more cost because of that mass reduction. Customers had always asked us, well, where's the science behind that? And that's why we uh, brought Tony and, you know, we wanted an expert that does this type of vibration analysis uh, day in, day out. And one reason we wanted Tony to come here is because, you know, people would say, well, uh, how much better really is the epoxy for uh, machine finishes for instance, or stiffness wise. And, and the two part epoxy was very stiff and stable. You know, anybody can machine down below, right above the pallet, but as you go higher on the tombstone column, uh, you begin to see more vibration and the finishes may not look as nice as way down below. Yeah, the advantage on the uh, two part epoxy tombstones is it's equivalent, uh, lightweight as aluminum, but it's also very stable with temperature changes. So if you, you're in a company that doesn't have air conditioning and they don't control their temperature, it, it could shrink and grow like aluminum, but epoxy does not do that, only aluminum does. So it keeps it very stable. The most important thing to consider when you're buying a tombstone is you gotta first see on the CNC machine, well, what's the weight limitation? Some high-speed machines, you don't have a lot of weight capacity on the pallet. So you have to then either turn to aluminum or, a, a, or say epoxy tombstone, which now we can offer. One reason we're doing this testing is because we want the public and, and the customers to understand um, what these tombstones are capable of and how they can perform and uh, produce good results by using these epoxies. You gotta have a solid foundation and that's why you gotta build on a rock.